I'm Roma. I live in Pontrenai. I came from Antigua in the Caribbean, 1959, in October. I was 15 years old. I came to stay with my mum, because she was here already, and my brother was in London. And um, my mother met me off the train. And I, live, I lived in South Church Street. And that's where my journey started in Cardiff. I'm, I was born the 22nd of December, 1943, so I'm 69. And I came from Antigua in the Caribbean. I was born there. And I came to Britain when I was 15 years old, came to Cardiff. I used, I had pneumonia when I was nine. And I had a very good childhood. My parents were separated, but I lived with my dad. And my aunties and cousins, they all looked after me because we lived in the same place. But I was never without my father's love or my mother's love. I used to see my mother all the time. She comes to see me. And, um, I remember Hurricane Janet, 1965. Um, no, 55, Hurricane Janet. That was, <laughs> that was really great. <laughs> Nobody speaks about the hurricane is great. But the reason why I say it was great, because we, we stayed in the church. You know, we had to go, everybody had to go to the church, board your house up, and when you, you know, they boarded the houses up and, we all went in the church and everybody just helped each other, you know, they just carried on with it. So that was nice. And then um, I went to uh, Mr. Henry, it's a private school in Antigua. Mr. Henry, that was a good school. And um, then when I was 15, oh, I went to St. Kitts when I was 12 years old. And I spent a year there with my mum. Then I went back to Antigua, and then when I was 15, I came to Britain. And when I came to Cardiff, my mother came first, and I had to, I stayed in London with my brother, and then he put me on the train, and my mother met me at Cardiff Station, and um, I went to South Church Street. Well, my mum asked my dad if she could have me, you know, if I could come and stay with her. And I was so excited, you know, and I wanted to come. But my dad, he cried all the time. From the time I said, yes, I would love to come, he was just kept crying because he didn't want me to go. But um, I, was, I was happy to be with my mum as well, you know, growing up like, isn't it, 15 years old. And um, I was just happy to um, come with my mum. Then when I got off at Cardiff Station and we went to South Church Street, it was just lovely. I loved, loved it. Because I used to go to the park every day. No, I didn't, no. Because uh, when you're a child, well, because I was, I wasn't bothered. I just wanted to come to my mother. So I didn't, I didn't, um, didn't think of anything, you know, just to know anything about Wales. I just, just wanted, my mum wanted me and I just wanted to come. But when I came, it was really different. It was, wasn't what I thought it was. But because um, seeing the houses <laughs> with the smoke coming out of the chimneys, <laughs> it was really funny. Because <laughs> we don't have houses. <laughs> We don't have <laughs> We don't have houses like that in the Caribbean. But seeing the houses, oh my gosh. Seeing the houses with chimneys and then when yeah, when you have to light the fire and then you realise that you gotta have those chimneys. <laughs> it's really funny that <laughs> really funny. 
chimneys. Oh, gosh. And then my husband worked in the coal mine, so we had loads of coal out in the cupboard. Out the, oh, my gosh. <laughs> if you tell people about that, they won't believe. You know, if you... When you send to tell them in the Caribbean, they won't believe that you gotta you gotta light a fire to keep warm, or you can have this <laughs> you can have this paraffin heater that stinks up the house, stinks up your clothes. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that was that was the trying part. <laughs> That was the trying part, but then, you know, you didn't have it for long because you start having heaters and all that, you know, but when you first come to, to Cardiff, or to Britain, I should say, it's the paraffin heaters, man. <laughs> oh, dear. And, um, and then I went to this club called the Rainbow Club for all ethnic children, families, and I met Mr. and Mrs. Kate there, oh, and it, it was lovely. And then one day, Miss, the Queen was the Queen and the royal the royal family was coming to Cardiff, and Mrs. Kate said, "Would me and the um, the two little girls dress up in the Welsh national costume?" So we did, and then um, they took photos of us, and we didn't see the photos. Well, we must have seen them, but I I can't remember. And then years later, a man who lived in Ninian Road was passing a skip by Mr. and Mrs. Kaitner's house. And he saw these photos in the skip. And he took the photos out and when he looked at them, he saw that it was people from the Rainbow Club. And then there was this photo with three little girls in a Welsh costume. And one of them was me and the other one was Elaine Campbell and the other one was Marcia Greaves. So he had lots of photos of the Rainbow Club. He put them in a shoebox and took them to um, Butown History and Arts, which was very good. That was a blessing because we've never seen those. We'd never see those photos again. And then every now and again, the three little Welsh girls keep popping up in everything. <laughs> Painting, coloring, cooking. Oh, we did all sorts of things. We had outings. And, um, oh, we just, oh, we had Shirley Bassey visiting us and just had a smashing time. Really nice for children. I'd love, to, I wish I could open the Rainbow Club again because that was really lovely. And um, they would just, you'd just have fun, you know. Table tennis, I'm sure they played table tennis and all that. It's really nice. Lots of uh, activities. Um, I didn't really have responsibilities. My cousins used to get up in the mornings and go <laughs> go look for the goats and, you know, the chickens, go get the eggs. But I didn't. Um, I just I just watched. I didn't do much. When I when I came to Cardiff, well, I just um, I didn't have much to do. I just. Um, help my mum with the cleaning in the house, you know, and um, shopping in town, which is all changed now. It used to be lovely, but it's changed now, but you know, everything's changing. So you can't really grumble about the changes. But when I go to the old, the old library and I look in the books and I could see Cardiff Bay and how it was when I came over, it's really lovely to see. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> it was so cold. I didn't realize it would be so cold. But, um, you know, my mum, she um, she took me to town, bought me coats, proper shoes, socks, and, you know, proper clothes. But it, it, was, it was nice, because we still went to the park, even though it was cold, you know, so it was nice. I just loved, um, I just loved Cardiff. I... I didn't like London. Just left Cardiff, and I still do. And um, I've never moved anywhere else but Cardiff. I've always stayed in Cardiff, so I didn't. Um, you know, I just love Cardiff, my Cardiff, my Tiger Bay. <laughs>
well, apart from the Rainbow Club, that's when I was 15, um, I believe I didn't bother with the Rainbow um, Club. When I Say 17, we didn't bother because um, I was a bit grown up then. So I used to go out with my friend. We used to go places, clubbing and all that. You know, places where you couldn't go at 17. But I went to, um, I went to do my nursing in Bath in Somerset and I was there for a year. Then I came back to Cardiff and then I met this young man, Cuthbert Greaves, and then we got married. Then I had my family. I was married at 19 and then I had my first baby at 20, Suzanne. I've got seven children now and uh, 25 grandchildren and nine great grands. So, you know, God, if it's good to me. <laughs> well, when I first came to Cardiff, it was really nice because um, we'd all used to be together. It was a lovely, lovely community and we'd all be together and we'd go to town, anybody would go to town and leave their houses, their doors wide open and no one would grumble, no one would complain and you come back and your house is still the same. Really nice because you could go and you could even go into somebody's house, an elderly person's house and say, oh would you like me to do this, would you like me to do that? And they would say yes, no you can't do that, you've got to have a CRB check before you can do things like that. But it was really nice in Butte, in, 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 in Butte Street. I lived in South Church Street. Butte Town was fabulous. Fabulous, because you can go out and you can go anywhere with anybody and nobody was troubling anybody. Children, they can play anywhere. Their the parents can take them to the park and leave them with their brothers and sisters. No, you have to go to the park with your children. You can't leave them with their brothers and sisters unless they're um, 20 or something like that. But it was really nice. The community was really nice. And there was, I never met any um, racial discrimination. So, you know, it's only now that we're getting it all. But I never met any because you trusted each other. Everybody trusted each other. And if anything happened, I believe if anything happened, they would have, everybody would have got together to get sorted out. But it was just great that you could go shopping and don't even bother about your door. Like now, if you leave your door um, open, you'd say, oh, let me go back and close the door. Oh, there was none of that, no hassle. And there was just one shop up, up the haze one shop, one shop, Indian shop that sold Caribbean food. Really nice, you know. We had uh, something like. Hot, like, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we had something, you know, from the Caribbean, which remind us like of back home, like, you know. But um, it was great. I just love, just love Cardiff. Loved Tiger Bay. And then they sent us all out. Everybody that I knew, that I used to live in Tiger Bay, that was so close together. They sent us in Leckwith, Birch Grove, Ely, Tremorpha, Splot, all over the place. So those people, you never, you don't see them really until you go to weddings, funerals and christenings, you know. So that was, that was the, it was, it was the love the love that people had for others. Not even for your family, but loving each other. It was love. Everybody loved each other, like Geraldine. Geraldine was saying to my daughter last week, I haven't known your mother since she was 15. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, just love, just people in one community. You, you don't find it these days because everything is gone, you know, haywire. But um, it was love. Well, I didn't live anywhere else, so I don't know. And I never, I suppose it happened, 
but I know because I used to live in Tiger Bay but I you know when they moved us out we never we were never able to do that not anymore this was different people different areas that they just moved us out the council you know so we were never you could never do that again that was just where the people were the heart of Tiger Bay and the people that were there they was just full of love when they went when they moved out they still had love but it wasn't the same it wasn't the same um, Rainbow Club had gone Mr. and Mrs. Kaitner had died but Mr. Kaitner had a travel agents in Albany Road but then he had died and then she had died no more Rainbow Club and so there was everything just went haywire people just moved out and they don't bother some people have moved back to Tiger Bay but I've never um, I love it I love it I love going down there I love going to St Mary's Church you know well not going to the church as a church but when I go down down Butte Street I love to see the church because that was that was a, a figure in in, um, in my life when I came to Cardiff before we started um, the evangelistic churches. We all used to go to St Mary's, but then everybody, you know, you came from a, an evangelistic background and you just needed to do what you had to do, like a club and church. And so that's why things have changed, like, but I still love St Mary the Virgin. I, lo I always will. That was my first church. Yeah. Um, manners and behavior will take you through this world even without a penny yes sir no sir thank you no thank you and and I, I taught my children and they teaching their children always have manners doesn't matter especially for your elders it's okay if you're on your your, your, your peer playing but for um, adults you know, for the elderly, always have manners and behave yourself. Oh, the first job I had was, um, I was working in Lionites in Sanatorium Road, and that was making jewelry boxes. <laughs> and then I went to Bath and became a nurse. And before I, and then I came back to Cardiff. I was only in Bath for a year and then to do my nurse's training. And then I came back to Cardiff and then I got married and had my, my started my family. So I didn't have many jobs. Um, oh yeah, I, I was in the army for 25 years and um, I had my long service medal. And I, I used to nurse, used to go to hospitals, you know, and um, do nursing. And I used to look after, I uh, used to do nursing in um, late, well, lately, um, about five years ago, in um, Mardi Street. And um, I went abroad with the army. I was in all, I went to all the shot. We used to do our training, goes to Brecon and do weekend training. And two weeks, we go away for two weeks, go to all the shot. That's the army town, it's lovely. And um, yeah, but in the army, the army life was great, but it was only part time. If I'd known it was so great, I would have gone for, you know, in the regulars. But um, it was great. I did once. I went to. Um, I went. I went to Aldershot one weekend, and um, we went swimming. A, a group of us soldiers, like men and women, we went swimming, and as I jumped in the pool. It was this little girl, and she said, ooh, what's that, you're black. And I was like, mm-mm, it's the first time that, you know, anyone have ever said that, but I don't know, she was probably, she's probably never seen black people before, I don't know, but she just said, oh, you're black. <laughs> and my friends looked at me and we all started laughing because I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I thought I've never had that before. And you never found that in Tiger Bay because it was so many different colors and you know, cultures and everything.
So you never found that in Tiger Bay. So I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh, great. I mix with anybody. I'll talk to anybody. It was, you know, I, I, didn't find, I didn't find it hard at all because I'm a people person. I love everyone. Talk to anyone, you know, even those that don't like you, you still talk to them because, you know, just make conversation. And some people will love it. Others don't, but some people love it. I didn't have a problem. Well, bringing up a family, it was hard because um, it was, um, I had uh, six children at the time. My husband was in, the, he was an electrician in the mines and um, it wasn't very easy. We lived in Leckwith. It wasn't very easy, but, um, but we managed. And because um, I had my mum before she passed away, my mum was there and she helped me with the children and um and my and my husband's mum and they were there for me like you know and then my sister came to britain and she was there and um i brought my children up the best i can and then my um my children became adults and they have children they were having children and it was just it was just nice i loved it because I was there, you know, for my my grandchildren. All of them are still there now, and my great grandchildren. It was my children have done well. One's a teacher. One's got her own business, energy efficiency. One's got one's just going to open her business. The other one, one's a plumber. And um, or my other daughter has got she's got her own business, um, health and safety. It's just my son; he's thirty, and he he's just working where he can. He hasn't got a proper job, but it's okay. My grand, my grandchildren, the first and the third, they one graduated two years ago, nursery nurse, and the other one graduated last week. Um, Tanisha, she graduated in biomedical science, which was lovely. Now she's working at the Heath Hospital in the bio, which is lovely. I, fabulous. My grandchildren, my great grandchildren, my children, they're all fab. The cinemas, oh, they love it. I, I haven't. The, lit, the, grand, the great grandchildren now, I will take them soon, but I've taken the grandchildren to the cinemas all the time. They love it. They go on their own now. <laughs> They're too old for me to take them to the cinema. They've faced quite a lot, really. Um, call, calling them names, you know, a lot of people call them names and um, don't want to sit beside them in school and terrible. And that was, that wasn't, um, my children in Fitzallen, and uh, they used to go to Fitzallen, they used to go to Kitchener. They never found any prejudice there in Kitchener or Fitzallen. It's when we moved up to Lanerin and Pentwin, that's where they found, you know? Because um, in Fitzallen, there's all different cultures, but there weren't so many up in Flanadin at the at the time. Oh, um when you when you're not working and you gotta go and find them um, a place where they'll give you money. Oh gosh. That was in Westgate Street like in it. You have to walk from the docks, go to Westgate Street and then they say, Oh, you gotta go somewhere else and you don't know where, you know, you just gotta find these things out. Like now if you don't know <laughs> You asked, like, but, they, you know, it was in those days, you just had to find where you had to go to get some money, isn't it? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Because, um, because I came over and I was, I couldn't go to school. So I had to go to night school then in um, Grangetown. 
in um, to go to night school in Grangetown because I was I was too old um, because of, because of the school leaving age, and so I had to take up to go to night school Grange Council, and um, that's where I used to go on the trolley buses from from South Church Street to get to Grangetown, you know. And the trolley buses, they were nice. Well, they were they were buses with things on the top. <laughs> and they go along they go they go along and you could see the sparks coming from you know, where they go along. It's good. <laughs> yeah, they they were nice. They they used to break down when the yeah, they they break down and people just go and fix them. But um, I think they were smoother than these buses. These buses they take you everywhere, <laughs> up and down, up and down. But the trolley buses were smooth. But then um, they got rid of them. Well, times change, isn't it? So. Hmm. I used to hear that um, some people said that when they come over and they saw all the chimneys, they thought they were all factories. There was tons of jobs. <laughs> yeah, some people say that, but it was just funny to see these these chimneys and smoke coming out of the chimneys, and you didn't know what it was. Do you know what I mean? I don't think I don't even remember if I saw some in London. I I, I don't even remember. I wouldn't say, I would say no, because it wasn't, you were young and it wasn't, um, if you didn't have a job and you had to go and like now you got to sign on and you had to go and see people um, in Westgate Street, you had to go and get money, but it wasn't, it wasn't easy to go from one job job to another you just have to wait and see you know wait your turn like yeah they're always asking about things um what it was what it's like in the caribbean some of them have been i've taken some of them with me to antigua and saint kitts and nevis and um they love it they love to live there but um their parents have got well they haven't decided but the children would love to go there to live. They love it. They really enjoy it and seeing my cousins and that. Because we, when I went, I took two of the granddaughters one year and um, we went on the bus to go to this, this place called Freetown. And when I got there, I said to the bus driver, I'm going to Freetown by my cousins. And he said, okay. Okay, the Nathaniel's okay, and then I, I, I was on the bus, and he said, "Okay, Miss, this this is where the Nathaniel's are. Some of them are here," and then he looked around, and then he said, "Those twins are your cousins." I was like, uh. <laughs> "They're my cousins, the twins." And then I got off the bus, and then I went to see somebody else. I said, "Oh, you got cousins over there?" It was cousins everywhere. But it was lovely, you know, my granddaughters love it. If we had stayed there, they would have loved it. They would have stayed there as well, you know. They came back and said, oh, mum, let's go to, let's go to Antigua. It's lovely. And they all love them, you know. It's my home, really. My home. And um, to be able to be able to visit lots of places in Cardiff, especially down the bay, because that's really nice. I love it down there. And um, and that little photograph, <laughs> that's always popping up. It pops up everywhere, you know. And that reminds me of, um, that reminds me of my childhood. I was 15, came to Cardiff, and it, it just made me feel good just to see that photograph popping up here, there, and everywhere. Because it was in the exhibition in Chapter Art, in, um, not Chapter, Butown History and Arts. It was in the exhibition again, 
And um, when I saw the photographs of old Tiger Bay and the people, you know, it's just fabulous. Fabulous. Well, my mum came to look for work to better her life, you know? And so did my sister and my brother. He came and he went into the army and then he was teaching um, he was teaching cadets, you know? So um, that's what I believe. That's all the people from the Caribbean. I believe they came over to um, find a better life. Jobs and, you know, opportunities and that. Well, they meet, they've, they meet, um, they meet once a week in this club called Aces. But um, it's difficult for some of them to get there because some are um, housebound, disabled, and they can't get there. But those of us who can get there, we really want to support it because it's the only club for um, Afro-Caribbean people, you know. Um, it's really nice that, um, that we've got one. And if we've got one, we should use it. But some people can't. But um, when they used to get together, when, when you know, from the Caribbean, when we used to get together, it used to be in Butown Community Center. And it was good, but that was just, you know, um, Christ christenings, weddings, funerals. And then when it's, when, when the when it's finished you go home then because um, they live different places it's not like it's not like living in uh, the, the bay that you celebrate and you're there in the same place they've because they're all over Cardiff then they don't see each other maybe for a year or something you know Aces provide a lunch club every Friday from one till three and um, we have um, different people coming in giving us talks and, um, and we go places we, we go to uh, both call we went to uh, Swansea at the museum and um, we go different places but there's a lot of people that come in and give us talks like the Heart Foundation, um, the Dental, and um, oh, Tony Hendrickson from um, Communities First. Yeah, Communities First. And then we have um, the lady from. care and repair. We have social workers come in and um, we had a lady from Marie Curie and um, oh, there's lots more. <laughs> we have lots of talks. We have talks from Bauzo. Lots of people come and talk. It's really nice. Pauline's done a good job and you know um, she's done a really good job for setting that up and making making some people happy. As well as us buying our lunch, other people come and buy their lunches as well. And she also delivers for a diabetic. So it's really great, you know. But I'd like to do a dinner three times a year for the ethnic, you know, the Afro Caribbean. Because like I said, we don't meet all the time. And the lunch club is so far away for some of them. And we don't get funding to get a bus to bring them, a mini bus to bring them. So if we could, um, if I could get some funding to do a dinner three times a year for the ethnic minority, and uh, we could even have it in Butte Town Community Centre, because where we have ACEs, it's the ch in the church, and it's not big enough to accommodate so many people and it would be nice 
to get the fendim to do that. So they meet three times a year and, you know, see see everybody and have fun. Just have their, um, you know, our our culture, food culture. It's very easy. The Indian shops are all over the place. Got Madav in them, Low Cathedral Road. We've got Clare Foods. We've got the Clare Food in City Road and we've got other Indian shops in off Albany Road and so it's very good, very good. You get your fish, you get sweet potatoes, you get yam, okra, everything. Lots and lots of things. All that you can get from the Caribbean, it's there now, even the drink you can get. So it's fabulous, really nice. Getting around. I believe, getting around. Because even though they've got like when over 60 you've got um you've got swimming but not every one of them use go to the pools i don't believe bowser um took us swimming but they don't do it now it depends on the fending that they get and um as going out disabled people disabled I mean, you get your pass, your best pass, from 60. But if they're not able, able-bodied, they don't get anywhere. I know a few, um, a few of us that go to um, ACES, um, we, get, we, use our, we use our best passes and we get around. But not all of them with best passes can get around, you know? They still need, especially the disabled, some of them are walking with one stick, two sticks. They can't get around. So, you know, they need um, they need um, a friendly neighborhood or, you know, somebody who knows them, who's got transport to take them around. This is where the heart, you know, the community. Well, I, I don't bother. <laughs> a lot of people do, but I don't. Um, if if you want to, you speak it. If you don't, then you don't. You don't. I don't. I don't think it's important, really. Because you know, um, the children just like to hear you speak it now and again. But it's not really. Um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> sometimes my children want to hear it. Sometimes the grandchildren want to hear it. When they go to the Caribbean, oh, they love it. <laughs> they love to hear it, you know. But, um, yeah, it's not that important, really. If it was, um, like, it's not like if you've got a language like French, German. Yes, there's a lot of them. Uh, the housing. The housing. The Afro-Caribbean have so much problems getting um, the house that you need. Like, I know that bungalows are few and far between, yes. But, no. Other people will get the Afro-Caribbean. It's very hard. It's very hard to get a house anyway. My friend who's in the Huggard, she keeps going up to them. She phoned me the other day. I met her in town, took her to McDonald's, and she's crying her eyes out. She says, oh, they won't give me a place. I need a one-bedroom flat. I need a place of my own. I told her to phone um, Vaughn Gethin. She said she did, and he didn't get back to her. The, the secretary said that he'll get back to her, and he never. And I thought, well, that's not good enough, you know. And um, I told her to uh, get in touch with um, the other the, the other one, but I don't think she did. Um, she got special Govia. needs. No, she hasn't got special needs. I told her to get, get in touch with Govia, but I, I think she's just fed up. And she just, she was born here. Her parents are from Jamaica. She was born in, in Bridge End, and she can't get a place. She's still in the Hoggard. They won't give it a place. And this is this goes on all the time. 
all the time. Terrible for housing. Don't like it at all. Oh, well, there's um, communities first. There used to be BS and B, VS and W. They closed. It's Bowser, but Bowser. Oh gosh. Bowser only looks out that, I mean they had funding before and they gave us funding but then that's it because they only do for the Somalis now I've seen it I've, I've, I've I don't like it anyway um, because we, we've asked for things like we've asked for more funding for them to take us out and a minibus to take us, you know, even um, up to Abu Dhabi, to Abu Dhabi. And um, they never got back to us. And, and the Somalis go everywhere. The Indians, the Indians have even got a, their own community centre. We haven't even got one. We have to use the one that everybody uses. But it, it's very hard. Very hard. I don't know whether it's council or no it has to be the council well the different housing associations I don't know but it's, it's very hard for the Afro-Caribbeans housing I feel for Benalla I can't do anything for her still in the Huggett house bawling her eyes out and I can't help her not right, is it? They should, um, they should all come together. All, all the, um, the bosses come together and discuss what they're going to do, like, and um, as for you doing this, then you should be there with them to say what you're doing and they, you know, they take it or leave it. The old library, yeah. I've been to the old library and two years ago, Pauline did, um, Pauline did, uh, I think it's still there, the photograph. This, not this, this one, this little photograph it, I think it's still there. I must go and have a look, because it um, Pauline did a uh, Pauline did something there, and she had all our photos, all the different photos in English and Welsh. She had them. She had them all over the place, and a lot of people came. A group, an ethnic group, came from Newport, and they came there, and you know they spent the afternoon with us in the exhibition and they saw what Pauline did and this little photograph was out with them um, other photographs it was out on the um, as you walk in you see it on the right I don't know if it's still there but that um, the old library that has got um, I haven't been to the other museums but that one has got um, write-ups and photos of the the ethnic minority. I don't and, and, and Saint Saint Fagans Museum? Um I went to St Fagans but I didn't go into the museum. So I, I don't know about St Fagans or the one up by uh, City Hall. But I know Butown History and Arts. That's the one. For the ethnic minority. Well, thank you. well at the moment um, I just thank God for my life my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. Just, um, well, I just thank him for Cardiff because I've been in Cardiff all these years and um, I've loved it. You know, even, well, there's ups and downs, but it's still nice to be in Cardiff, to come all the way from Antigua to Cardiff, to love it, and um, I'm still here still here, never went anywhere else.
only bath for a year and that was it. But um, I just love Cardiff. I've met so many people and I've known so many people. And, uh, uh, I haven't had a problem. No problem. Just love life. 